on an all-new Dr. Phil. He says you are a horrible human being that is keeping his children from him. Exes at war. He was kicked out after he threw me to the wall. You pushed me, I pushed you back. Fighting each other. You grabbed my throat and then I grabbed I your throat. I didn't grab your throat. And fighting for custody. Your daughter's recording this and she says you're smoking dope, right? That's a cigarette. She said, Mom, it smells really funny. You did coke while you were with her? After the kids were put to bed. Did you do stupid stuff when you were on drugs? Not really. Did you attack her father with a baseball bat? I wasn't on drugs when that happened. That's better? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. It's a battle of the exes. 37-year-old Brad says he is deadlocked over custody of his three children with his ex, Kimberly. Kimberly has not allowed Brad to see his children in seven months because she says he's unstable, unmotivated, irresponsible, verbally abusive, drug-taking, deadbeat loser. <laughs> Take a look. Brad hasn't seen our kids in seven months. I am trying to support these kids on my own. He's not paying child support. He's over $30,000 behind. I want him to take ownership of that and quit blaming everybody else. Brad is constantly cursing me out, calling me vulgar names. Bitch, badass. His words have broken me, and he has so much hate for me. He's threatened me so many times that I've had to get, like, three restraining orders on him. I would say I've called the cops on him between five to ten times. I've said to people, he's probably plotting my death right now. Brad is physically abusive to me. One time, he had grabbed me and thrown me through the wall and saw the hole. I can't believe that it was that much force. That anger scares me. He doesn't see what he looks like when he's in that rage, and it's scary. I think he hates himself. I think he hates his life. He was telling my daughter, I harm myself. That'll be on you. How dare you put that on your child? I don't know what the drugs have done to him. My oldest daughter, she said to my mom, my dad smokes pot in the car. And she sent me a video of him smoking marijuana. She said, Mom, he has to keep relighting it, and it smells really funny. I was like, I need to call DFS. I need to get in touch with the local authorities. There are consequences for his actions. It's on the court order that he's supposed to take the drug test. I wish he could just admit the things that he's done wrong and accept that he, he needs to get help for it. So you don't like him anymore? I don't like him, um, the actions that he does. No, we don't get along. I would like to get to a point where I do like him and we do yeah. get along. Because he doesn't say nice things about you. He says you are the evil bitch from hell. <laughs> he, he says you, you are like a horrible human being that is keeping his children from him to hurt him that you're using them to beat him up, to batter him, and that you are vindictive, and that this is a war, and they are your weapons. Take a look. Mother of my kids, this is a very hateful person. Addictive, abusive, manipulative, and cruel. Kimberly is destroying my life and their childhood. I pay her $800 a month, and she's still having the kids call and say, oh, well, I want a $200 pair of boots, or I want a $120 baseball bat. I can't keep up. It all revolves around money that I don't have. I've had multiple restraining orders, not because I hit her, not because I hurt the kids. She wanted me out of the house. She's done it again and again and again. My kids have seen me arrested. She's not going to be content until she sees me in jail or in the ground. I've had five DFS visits for stupid things. One time she called DFS on me because she said she got lice from my house. It's enough to drive a sane person crazy. I have had some really 
scary health problem. I'm afraid I'm gonna die of a heart attack. Kimberly's only problem with me is that I smoke pot. Six months ago, Kimberly called my mom and she said she had evidence of me smoking pot in the car with the kids. But I did not do that. Kimberly is using the marijuana as her weapon. She wanted to get custody and then she knew she had the weapon to use against me. Kimberly treats the kids like they're pawn pieces on a chessboard. Last time we went to court, she knew she was taking the kids. She flashed this smile going into the courtroom. Like, no, I got you. There's this huge hole in my heart, and I don't know how to get through day to day. And I'm going to get them back. So this is a war between you two. Absolutely. And you're losing badly. Yes, I am. Why? Um, Dr. Phil, I, I've had a problem with addiction. What? I, I'll smoke marijuana. Uh-huh. Okay, so because you're smoking marijuana and you have a court-ordered drug test, you can't pass the drug test. I'll take them and pass them, and then I'll have another one, and I'll fail it, and then I'll take another one, and I'll pass it. It's... Have you cheated to pass them? I have. Not all of them, but I have in the past, yes. Okay. So you've cheated to pass the test, and then you fail test, and you know that it's court-ordered, because the court has said you, you have to stay drug-free, including marijuana. Yes. Okay, so when you smoke the dope, you're knowingly violating the court order, which precludes you from having access to the children. So you're making the choice to not see the kids. It's like, okay, I, got, I can smoke the dope or see the kids. I think I'll smoke the dope. I mean, that's what it's coming down to? It's not really that cut and dry. Um, I don't feel as though I'm making the choice. Uh, I was doing... Who, who's making it? Well, of, of course I am, ultimately. But the pot thing, it seems to help with my anxiety. It helps me sleep. It helps me eat. I, I'm... Well, there I, are other ways to achieve that. I know. Brad's older daughter says that she saw Brad smoking marijuana while driving her and her siblings around. She says she even captured it on tape. So let's take a look at that and I'll let you respond. Um, and this is you driving. And she says that here you're smoking dope, right? And so she's in the back seat using her cell phone camera and she's recording this. So what is it that she's recording? I don't believe it's me smoking dope. What, what that's is it? Not, just by the way that I'm holding it, that's a cigarette. I know, I, you guys, I know it sounds ridiculous, I, I do. You just said, no, 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 that was just a cigarette, but that's not what you told your daughter. You didn't tell it to your daughter it because was... in a text exchange with your daughter, you said, hey, smart ass, Ask your mom how it feels to be stoned. She smoked in the garage with me at your house. Then your oldest daughter said, okay, when you're ready to act like an adult, like I'm trying to do, then we can talk. Then you said you saw a synthetic fake version, a placebo to help me stop. Taste and look similar, but doesn't get you high. I have never and will never use around my kids. Uh, now, the oldest daughter says, I know what I saw, and I sure know what it was. You're not going to change my mind. Then you said, grow up. Uh, I'll be gone soon enough. You want to make it faster? Keep this blank up. Then explain to your brother and sister how your dad killed himself rather than live without his kids because he had a small amount of pot in his hair. Such a monster. I'm done with you. Then I don't give a damn what you believe anymore. You're going to miss me, and I'll be gone forever. That's your problem, not mine. Live with that. You wrote that to your daughter. I guess. I'm ashamed of that. How old is she? She's 14. Brad, buddy, I, I want to help you here. 
but you got to help yourself. You, that is... That's cruel. Outright abuse. That is mental and emotional abuse of a child. Who but does that? We also don't have on there how that conversation was started. Does, there is no context in which you can wrap that conversation. No. I don't care if she had you under the car on a jack and dropped it on your foot. It doesn't matter. Is there a context in which you want to justify that comment to her? No. There's nothing that I can say to justify what was just up on that screen. He was kicked out after he threw me through the wall. I, I didn't throw you through the wall. There was one time I had my hand on your throat, but I did not squeeze. I held you at the fireplace and said, now you're going to listen to me. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, she published a book. A lot of it is true. Your mother fed cat meat to your father. But her family's calling her out. It was just a complete book of lies. You are out of your mind. I think my brother has some mental illness going on. What's in her book? Now that my sister's gone public with the story, people look at me like I'm a freak. That has them so upset. I choose to just pretend my sister doesn't exist. She does exist. Not in my world. Tomorrow. Then on Monday, Dad's an embezzler. Your husband is going to prison. And Mom, you're a drunk, has checked out. I don't know how to deal with it. I know how to deal with it. You get over it. That's Monday. Well, let's take a look at another exchange between Brad and his oldest daughter. This one happened uh, three months later. This was December 28th, three days after Christmas. This pushed on into February 11th, 2014. Brad, honestly, the way you treat me, I don't think you feel much except greed, hate, spite, and anger. This is to your 14-year-old daughter. It would be a nice change to know my kids knew how to love, respect, and be kind to those less fortunate than themselves. Guess that is my fault for being a blank, abusive, non-caring excuse for a dad. At least you got your mom to teach you the right way to treat people. Then your daughter says, Dad, I'm done getting yelled at by your girlfriend. I just won't come over. Well, that's original. Don't call me your dad and treat me like I'm a sperm donor. Do whatever you want. You guys win. Please leave me alone. I really don't want to talk to anyone. Happy New Year. I just wanted to say I give up. See you again someday. Your daughter says, get rid of her and then we'll come over again. You say, I hate my life, so I'm going to change it. I won't be punished for trying to love you kids and not your mom. I will change my number tomorrow and none of you have to see me again. I'm sorry I was such an awful father, but I love you with everything I have and always will. I'm done with your disrespect. You know nothing of maturity, child. No game. I'm done with you. I can slap the taste out of your mouth, too. Do not text me again. Were you high when you wrote that? Were you, I mean, no, seriously, I'm not trying to be a smart ass. Were you high when you wrote that? No, sir. You were stone cold, sober, lucid, yeah. and clear thinking when you wrote that to your daughter. Yeah. What was your desired effect? I just... I want her to quit hating me so much. I just, I, I don't want her to hate me. She does not understand that since she has been born, Kimberly, a month after she was, I, I didn't see my daughter, I saw her in the hospital the first day she was born. I didn't see her again four months after that. Mm -hmm. And it's been like this on again, off again, on again, off again. I have them, I take them away. What, what you guys aren't saying, a year ago, I this was watching. This is not an election. You don't, they're not gonna vote. No. You can talk to me. Really, we're not going to well, vote okay, on this Dr. later. Oh, what you're not seeing. I was watching those kids Wednesday through Saturday every single week. Mm -hmm. We had no problems. I took them to school. I make sure they have clean clothes. I make sure they have a house. I was kicked out on my butt again and had to start over, all over with nothing. You wouldn't even send clothes over for the kids. He was kicked out after he threw me through the wall, and I told him he needed let's to leave. Let's talk about that, too. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because I didn't throw you through the wall. As a matter of <laughs> That's fact... That's why there was a repair. I had to have somebody repair the hole that was in my wall, the size of my body. You pushed me. I pushed you back. You fell you into the wall. You grabbed my throat, and then I grabbed I your throat. I didn't grab your throat. Oh, right. Okay. I have never physically hurt you, Kimberly, and you know it. I have not, will not, and will never 
put my hands on you. There was one time I feel guilty about, and that was when we were at the house in Overland, and you were saying you're going to do exactly what you're doing right now. Take your throat, but I did not squeeze. I held you at the fireplace and said, now you're going to listen to me. How many arguments have I started with you? How many, you how many fights did I, no, no, no. How many fights did I start with you? You see here, like, this is how you are with me. Like, your tone, you're, you came out here and you, like, just Why can't you just answer down. the question? How many fights have I started with you? I worked two jobs. I made you dinner. You'd come home with an attitude and were screaming at everybody about the house. You wouldn't even know kids live in our house because you come home and want to have a, a, a fit about whether there's a dish in the sink or there's a toy on the floor. I picked the kids up. I took them to school. I came home. I did the homework. I made dinner. I did the laundry, and I had your dinner in the microwave when you got home, didn't I? Yeah, and then when you had all that stuff done, you would end up leaving. Well, did he do those things? Yeah, he did those things. So he did those things. Yes. He tended to the kids. He administered to the kids. He did the mm -hmm. housework. He did yeah. the cooking. He did all of that. Mm -hmm. And were you appreciative of that? Probably not. All, no, not all you the time. You would know it when she walked in the door. Because as all soon as he us. had all that done, as soon as he had all that done, he was going and getting ready, and he was out. Where, and almost no, 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 every no, 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 night, no. he was gone. You're talking seven years ago. No, I'm I not. I haven't gone anywhere because I, I don't have not. any friends anymore, Kim. Oh. And why is that? Because I have tried to change because my you're life. Hard, because you just hate everybody. I love my kids. That's why I'm here. Well, you don't show them. You love them by the things that you do. Really? Because really. um, I've talked to them all weekend. What's your ownership in this? My ownership <clears throat> is that I wanted things to work and I kept going back to a situation because I wanted him to change. I wanted him to be the dad that I want him to be. And yes. Okay. Now you I... didn't you didn't misunderstand the question. You didn't misunderstand the question. What's your ownership in this problem? I, I do get upset and I do yell. That is what where my fault is in this. And if you think for one second that I would ever do anything to hurt you that, that involved having the police called or having me locked up well, you don't know when to listen, do you? Sorry. Did you do stupid stuff on drugs? Not really. Did you attack her father with a baseball bat? I wasn't on drugs when that happened. Oh. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Pete embezzled money for three years. He's going to prison, and you're drunk all the time. A family in crisis. You said, I do not leave the bar intoxicated. Why are you lying to me? Will their older kids... Everyone asks me to fix everything, and I can't do it. ...be forced to raise their family. I checked out. That is not an option. I don't know how to deal with it. I know how to deal with it. You get over it. That's Monday. According to Brad, mm -hmm. you, you, he's got a pretty good inventory list for you as well, that you've kept the kids from him, that you filed restraining orders on him, you've had him arrested in front of the children, that you've coached your daughter to say really mean things about him, no. that you refuse to let Brad's parents see the children, no. that you've told his mom he was smoking pot with the kids in the car. I that didn't do that. You, you filed restraining orders saying that he hit you, that you've talked badly about Brad in front of the kids. Uh, you blackmail him saying he won't see the kids unless he pays up money that he, he doesn't have. Uh, that's not true. You, you called the Department of Family Services when his girlfriend disciplined Discipline, the son. biting my child on the arm is not uh, discipline. I'm sorry. That's... You threatened to move the kids away. You had a warrant out for him, but you let him drive the kids back and forth to school while you had a warrant out. You didn't tell him you had a warrant out for him. While it was out for him, you let him drive the kids no, back the and forth to school. the warrant was for child support. For him not, he's over $30,000 in paying child support. But, you, but there was a warrant out for him for his arrest, right? Mm -hmm. And I told him about it. And you, but you let him drive the kids to and from school while there was a warrant out for his arrest. Yes. Don't those things seem... Bit incongruent? Do you have a history of breaking up with him, taking him to court, and, and then getting back together with him, right? right? You keep detailed lists of his bad behavior so you can use them later? I, I used to keep a journal, but I got rid of all the tapes and everything. Because I, I want this why, part of my life to be gone. Why did you wait so long to put his name on the birth certificate? We didn't even know that it wasn't 
Well, wait a second. Don't look at me. This was our oldest daughter. When I gave birth to her, I, we didn't even know where he was. I was living with my parents at the time. I, is he the father? Oh, yeah, he's the father of all three of them. And you knew that when she was born? Yeah, and he signed. He didn't... He, I filled out the birth certificate, and I even put his name on there. But because he didn't sign it, our, our county and our state will not put it on there. When y'all were dating and stuff, and he was, like, into drugs and stuff... I wasn't aware of that. So... He's a stoner and going to raves and all. And you, you had no idea. No, I really didn't. And my mom would tell me she's like, he's. What do you think it was like Home Depot or something? Where did you think he was? No, we were not living together or anything. And he just would m cancel with me and not have plans. Y'all haven't I loved like y'all haven't smoked up together or anything. No. Not no. just two years ago in the garage. No. No, no, I never did. I went out in the garage and I saw him and I yelled at him and that was one of our fights that we always had. Don't lie. You are. I'm not lying. I never I'm did. Not. I never did. I'll come clean about all of it. You did coke for like seven years. Yes, sir. While you were with her. Yep. After and the kids were put to bed. He would take my debit card. He says, "I just need twenty bucks. I just need twenty bucks." And I said, "Okay." Just 20 bucks. And I never let him have my debit card. Every, every time he would take my debit card, I would take it and I would change the PIN number because he would go in my wallet and he would take it out. I took the debit card one time to no, prevent you, you from making the... Did you get, like, really stupid when you were on drugs? Did you do stupid stuff when you were on drugs? Not really. Did you attack her father with a baseball bat? I wasn't on drugs when that happened. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's nope. better? <laughs> I was hoping um, you were on. on drugs when that happened. I, I would be happy to talk about that, actually. Oh, I would, I'd love to get to the bottom of that. Did you s steal money from the kids' piggy banks? No. Yes, he has. When? When they were younger. And I would have to tell the kids, you need to hide your piggy banks. But you had no idea he was on drugs. That sounds pretty made up. <laughs> you just thought he was the and piggy that... bank bandit. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up where that that lifestyle was very foreign. And now looking back on it, and I even tell people now, looking back on it, oh my gosh, I was so stupid. Like, I didn't see the signs. I see it now. You knew all along. Did you, pa you, did did you pawn the bassinet? I had bought the bassinet, and yeah, we were arguing, and I pawned it. Yes, I did. But you, again, no clue. I knew at that point he was doing marijuana. I did not know he was into cocaine. He didn't tell me that until t after 2008. I didn't tell you. You had a drug test done, and that's how you found out. He pawned the car. <laughs> he pawned the car. He took out a title loan on the car, right? Come on. Come on. When you're married to he somebody and they're money. robbing the kids' piggy banks, pawning the bassinet know, and the I car, know, Phil, these it, are clues. I know, Put but them I together. didn't know. I was so stupid and naive. I this know. is a puzzle. I loved him, and I wanted to believe that he wouldn't do something like that. Okay, let's take a break. Kimberly says Brad can't help but have a violent temper and a nasty disposition. He gets it from his mother. <laughs> well, we're going to meet Brad's mother, Carol, whom Kimberly says... Kimberly says she started a fist fight at her baby shower. And Kimberly's mother, Norma, who says Brad is a psychopath and thinks his mother, Carol, is demonic. We'll be right back. I had a situation with Brad's mother at a baby shower where she attacked me. The green-eyed monster kind of came out. Kim's mom was in the middle of the kitchen, and she made a comment and kind of got real close to me. She grabbed hold of my arms and shook me and was pushing me towards the oven. Four years ago, it was my son's t-ball game, and my oldest daughter asked Brad for some money for the concession stands, and he said, no, I don't have any money. Kim's dad started calling me Everything from a deadbeat to a loser to a piece of trash. Brad had a baseball bat in his hand, and he went up to my mom and basically jammed the, the bat in her stomach and told her to keep a lid on my dad. Brad took the bat and went to go try to hit my dad in the head. That never happened. I took that baseball bat and I hit him in the wrist with it one time. These people can play the victim like it's nobody's business. He left and came into the police. He was banned from the park because of that incident. 
Brad says he will do anything to be able to spend time with his kids, but Kimberly blocks him at every turn. He says the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because her mother, Norma, is a pain in the butt as well. His words, not mine. Well, the feelings might be mutual because Kimberly is not impressed with Brad's mom, Carol, who she claims tried to fist fight her mother at her baby shower. <laughs> well, let's see what the mothers have to say. Brad is very selfish. He always puts his interests above that of the children. Kimberly is vindictive, bipolar. Kimberly has a temper. I blame Carol. I would describe Carol as being evil. I had a situation with her at a baby shower where she attacked me. Carol and I ended up getting into a confrontation because she took the baby downstairs. I didn't know I had to ask every time I went to pick the child up. Kim's mother was in the kitchen. She made a comment, kind of got real close to me. She grabbed hold of my arms and shook me, pushing me toward the oven. She wasn't touching me, but she's going like this. I grabbed her wrist and I said, if you think I am going to have a cat fight with you, you're wrong. I ended up having bruises on my arms. Carol is demonic. She chooses to follow the path of the devil. I feel sorry for Brad. He's always had mommy telling him what to do, when to do it, how to behave. Brad's mother enables him. She's constantly giving his money, paying his bills. I hear this word, enabler. I don't condone his behavior. I just, I, I don't know what to do. Okay, I I'm glad y'all are here. I'm, yeah. uh, what'd you want to say? The first thing I want to say, I am not demonic or terrible like this woman is telling you guys. I did not have an argument with her in the front of the kitchen. There are three people that know what happened. Look at me. You won't look at me, will you? Three people know. They know you, her. me, and God. And you know what? <laughs> My conscience is clean. I have a clean conscience, Carol. Yeah. And there were 15 wow. people that saw what happened. There were 15 people and because... And they heard your mouth. What happened? <laughs> All right. What, did y'all get in a fight? There was an email that these two sent out saying that the baby was not going to be able to be passed around. I didn't get the email. This is my granddaughter. I went in. I got her out of her baby bed because I had my girlfriend was in. The only person I knew in that house was downstairs. I took the baby down there. Kim came up to me, grabbed the baby out of my hands. I went up to leave. She was in the kitchen. She came at me with her hands like this, going like this. I grabbed her wrist like this to stop it. And I told her, if you think I'm going to have a cat fight with you in the middle of this kitchen, you're pathetic. Is funny? This is not funny. This is not funny. This is serious. Lies yeah, it is funny, Brad. Lies are very funny. Oh, let's get you on a lie detector suit after. Stop. Go ahead. I let her go. I walked off, got my things, then I left. Like I said, there's three people that know that. So happened. that's not what happened? That was a total fabrication of what happened. So what happened in the kitchen? Carol took the children, took the baby downstairs, and I got jealous. And I went and I told Kim. Kim went downstairs, got the baby from Carol, and said, she's not to be down here. Carol came storming up the steps. I was putting stuff in the oven. She came up and grabbed my arms and said, you disturbing bitch. And I said, take your hands off of me. I don't believe and that for a second. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I told her, I said, if you can't watch your filthy mouth, then get out of here. And I'll take a lie detector. Gladly. Oh, please do. No, I, I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I, I'm good. Um, so somebody threw down on somebody in the kitchen, and, and you two had a confrontation. Certainly since then, maybe before, you two don't particularly care for one another. Because you've said that, that she's demonic and a psychopath and cheats on her taxes. She lies. She lies through her teeth. And she encourages him to do the wrong thing. She's told him all along that he I shouldn't have to pay child support. Thank you very much. Stop. I wasn't talking to you. Don't, I was talking don't, to Phil. Don't Thank interrupt you. her. You are lying, and you know you're lying. Can I just say something? Please. Go ahead. I hear you guys laughing. Well, you know, they're, they're laughing because... It's it, stupid. It, it's, they're laughing at the ridiculousness of it. Uh -huh. Am I right? <laughs> grandmother. I don't want to fight this battle. 
I will respect Kimberly, but I truly do not want to deal with her anymore. I'm tired. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is their sister's book fiction? A lot of it is true. It's just a complete book of lies. Your mother bed cat meat to your father. You are absolutely out of your mind. That's tomorrow. What, what did you bring out with you here? Oh, I... These are emails that I've kept for the past year. And I've tried so hard to stay out of this. And I wanted you to have this information and uh -huh. it didn't get to you. Okay, and, and this is proof of... Ma'am? I've tried to stay out of it. I've told and th them... This, this proves what? Uh... Well, well, one thing, it sh shows that she knew that... I asked her in there that she knew Brad was using pot. I didn't realize that I thought he'd stopped. But Kim knew. I have told everybody. I've known her from the very beginning. She you guys know. never had. Because you would like, never look her. me in the face. And I knew from the very beginning. I've been more there will than be respectful a blue. than what you deserve. And it, I'm writing to Kim and I'm telling her, Kim, I can't get in the middle of this anymore. You guys have to work this out. Okay, you, you, and I, 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 I read. I know there's a lot there. No, but I read super fast. <laughs> no, I really, I, I really do. And I thank you for this. is very helpful, actually. Y you do know that he's smoking dope, right? Yeah. Okay. Until yesterday, about five o'clock, I was under the understanding that he had quit totally. Okay. And then I called him, and I find out he was honest with me and said. Well, I have used it. And I said, are you going to pass a drug test? And he said, no, I won't. And then I had to go in front of the camera and I said, you know, I, I'm tired. I don't know what to do anymore with this. Um, I want to be a grandmother. I don't want to fight this battle. Um, I will respect Kimberly because she's my grandkid's mother. But I want... I, truly do not want to deal with her anymore. I'm just, I'm tired. I'm very tired. And let me tell you, um, he's, he's lied to you about pot yes. until recently. And, but let, let me ex explain something to you that you need to understand. Drug addiction is, is a disease. And he's suffering from this disease. And it often occurs in what we call a comorbidity situation where it coexists with other disorders and oftentimes psychological disorders and it's apparent to me that there's a lot of anger bubbling around in him well, some of it's directed at her some of it's directed at his at himself and circumstance but um, he, he does have an addiction problem here with this it doesn't make him a bad person, it, but it does make him an addict, and that's something that has to be uh, dealt with. And that's why know, I'm here. I think you do have a real serious problem with impulse control. You say things that um, it's just hard to take back. Stupid, you know. You, you yeah. say things sometimes, and they seem really good, they seem like a good idea at the time, and then later you go, "Oh my God, it was really stupid." Yeah. Like even now, you know, you you don't whatever you do. You don't ever want to disrespect a woman. You certainly don't ever want to disrespect the mother of the, the mother of your children. You don't have to like her, but you, it's unbecoming to you to speak in a quarrelsome way with the grandmother of your children. It's just unbecoming to you. It, it doesn't help the situation. Let's, do, let's take a break for a minute. We're, we're going to meet the woman who Brad thinks drove Kimberly over the edge with jealousy. Kimberly says she's not jealous. I'm talking about Brad's girlfriend, Nikki, uh, who uh, Kimberly thinks just isn't fit to be a mother, much less a stepmother. We're going to add one more person to the mix when we come back, and then I'm going to tell you all what I think here. We'll be right back. Brad's ex, Kim. She's a Nazi as far as I'm concerned. Kim called DFS on me because I threatened to hit her son with a rubber spatula. Another time. He bit me, so I bit him back. It was kind of something like that. 
Next thing I know, DFS is cold. Brad's ex, Kim. She's a Nazi as far as I'm concerned. The moment I met the woman, I realized she was a different breed. She was immature. She didn't introduce herself. She decided to yell at me and call me a bitch, a flavor of the month, a whore. One time, Kim called DFS on me because I threatened to hit her son with a rubber spatula. He threatened to stab his little sister with a knife. I told him to knock it off. He wouldn't listen to me. I told him if he didn't apologize to his sister, I was going to beat him with a spatula. Kim just blew this whole thing out of proportion. DFS came out to the house, and they said it wasn't warranted. Another time, Kim called DFS. Her son didn't want to do his homework, so I started tickling him to try to get him on board. We started wrestling around. He bit me, so I bit him back. I didn't leave any marks on him. Well, it was kind of something like that. He didn't seem to be in any pain. DFS didn't come out for that visit at all. I'm not necessarily good at taking care of children, but I'm learning. Well, I I'm glad you're here. Um, I think they said you bit him because you bit him, right? I bit him because he bit me. Oh, and that's okay. He left a bruise on him the size of a bite mark. He had teeth marks on him. I have when a DFS report. Our house. So and the we. DFS worker saw it. The DFS worker told me that that statement, as well as the one about the spatula, was not warranted. There was no evidence found that I had done anything to hurt your children. The fact that she said when I first met her, she's like, well, if you don't think you can handle having kids, maybe you should Oh, you mean when you come storming just... out of the house, calling oh, yes. her a whore you and every other name in the name book? in the book, and I hadn't even gotten out of the car, Kim. I was going to You had just showed up at our house a week before with a different girl. Who I'm, I'm with and where I'm doing Listen and what. Listen to me. I it's went out your to the damn car. Car. Yes, it is. When she my has children, children around them, she's like a custodial parent. Can I say something? She's the custodial parent. That's right. I have no respect for you. I'm sorry. I realize that, but you don't know her. You have no reason to disrespect me. know. Let me just click a few things off here. Um, you, you shouldn't bite children, right? I really shouldn't. Do you agree that you have a temper problem? Yeah. And it flares up real quick? Yeah. And, and you you said you don't have anywhere else to vent. You vent it with her some, and she vents hers with you. Uh, yeah, you know, I read some of the text messages where you say terrible things to her. You talk, You are a complete idiot. Should have appreciated what you had instead of being such an ass. Then again, I don't know what's bigger, your ass or your lying, hypocritical, backstabbing mouth. <laughs> what? Uh, He's okay saying that. At that time, it then was, you post yeah. up on Facebook just in October. It's a shame you can't burn witches at the stake anymore. <laughs> How do you get rid of evil trash that openly practices bitchcraft? <laughs> Guess that's always justifiable homicide or temporary insanity. Now, where to get a tub big enough to hold all the acid for their fat, lazy ass? The zoo, perhaps. Hippo size me, please. <laughs> Laugh out loud, feeling optimistic. Uh, Can I say one thing? He wasn't raised like that. Apparently he was. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to take a break because I need one, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to tell Brad and Kim what I think needs to happen as soon as possible. We'll be right back. Make no mistake, all of these antics, all of this combat, all of these things that are going on here, the children are picking up the tab for you running an emotional agenda. The children are picking up the tab for you running an emotional agenda. Um, and they, they will resent you for that in the long run. You may think you're winning because you have the children and they're cleaving on to you and he's on the outside looking in. The day will come when they will look at you and say, why did I have to grow up without my daddy? I promise you this will backlash on you and you will remember the day that I said that to you if things don't change here. You need to get yourself cleaned up and I will help you do that if you're willing to do it. And Absolutely. you need to go to rehab. This is my gift that I am offering to essentially your children by giving their father a chance to get himself cleaned up and straightened up. I will make arrangements for you to go to Origins Behavioral Health Care. 
on South Padre Island in Texas. I will fly you there. I will arrange for the treatment. They will deal with your addiction. They will deal with the mental and emotional issues that go with it and work your tail off and give you a chance for once in your life to honest to God, be straight and level and clean so you can come back to this co-parenting and come back to your children clear-eyed with your head on straight. I will make those arrangements for you if you will take that offer. Absolutely. I'd be a fool not to. Yes, you would. Deal? Absolutely. All right, we'll do that. Um, um, and you support that, right? And I, at, at the time that's done, then I will also provide a skilled family counselor that will come in and orchestrate a co-parenting plan so everybody can get involved and everybody can have some peace in giving these children a, a great support unit for everybody. All right, can, can we do that? Can we do that? And the, the children are here today, correct? I would like to make a request that you allow these two to spend some time with those children before he goes mm -hmm. off. We, we, is that all mm -hmm. right with you guys? Yeah. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Origins Behavioral Health Care. Uh, if you're experiencing some kind of family drama in your own family or marriage, go to drphil.com. I want to have some important advice for you there, some helpful resources. I'm also going to have a link there to Origins Behavioral Health Care in South Padre Island so you can take a look at what happens there. Uh, I think they're the best of the best. Well, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.